Hi, my name is Fernanda Hernandez. I am the Director of Sustainable Projects and Global Communications for Luisa Via Roma. Um, my main interest and my mission in life is to do something um, related with social responsibility and whatever I do in business to try to make an impact uh, in the world for a better uh, situation for the planet and for the people. Uh, so to have like benefit someone else than myself. Hi everyone and welcome to Half Academy. Today I'm going to interview Fernanda Hernandez, who is the head of global communications and sustainable projects at Luisa Via Roma. Welcome Fernanda and thank you for being here with us. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to, to, to give a big message and also it's like really admirable all the things that you're doing. So I'm super happy to be here sitting with you to speak about like really important content. Um, I will tell you a little bit about Luisa de Aroma, as you know, is one of the most important e-commerce worldwide um, related with fashion luxury. Then it came from home, beauty, kids, uh, also like design as well we are having in the in the in the website and um, it's an e-commerce that is shipping up to 160 countries so the 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 reach it's huge you know internationally it's up to 60 million um, you know visitors per year so it's really really high yeah, it's really huge, and I know that you've been with the company for what eight years now, yeah. correct? Yeah. But was it your first job at the fashion industry, or where you started somewhere else? No, actually, my background is totally different. I study law. My my uh, interest was always just in human rights and try to help and try to do things related with social responsibility. Then I did international negotiation, and then I did a master in digital marketing and PR. So everything took me to the direction of um, fashion, but somehow in these roots of uh, social responsibility, I have been doing a lot of projects that I could mix also with the fashion, which I think that it totally make uh, their go hand in hand. Yeah, so you were able to mix creativity and human rights together, the things you're passionate about. Yeah, let's say, I think that we could all do that in every, yeah. in every field, you know? <laughs> Which is true, mm -hmm. but why you're so passionate about this important causes such as sustainability and human rights in general? Well, um, there are like two reasons. One is like, like really personal. You know, like um, uh, years ago, I lost someone that makes a before and after in my life. And I realized how life is like, like so quick, like it could be so short and it could change from one moment to another. And um, we should really think in like working and giving our energy and things that really matter. Um, so I thought that each one of us and at least in particular me, I needed to canalize, canalize all that pain uh, to do something in favor or of someone else and myself. So uh, this was like the personal reason why I started to do things a lot related with social responsibility. Um, the thing on the, on the fashion industry, I think that it's really needed because as you know, there are like a lot of things that are not um, like how we wish that the world could work, you know, and you know, for the, for your foundation as yeah, well. Yeah, that's why I so, started it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like one of the, the most important industries, you know, economically. It's the second industry that is damaging the environment, like really in a hard uh, impact, you know. And at the same time, the things and the um, uh, situations between women and men are totally, you know, different. I'm talking about salaries, I'm talking about image, I'm talking about a lot of things. So I think that we could really change the situation as 
most of the clients of fashion are we are are women so uh definitely we could like change that uh path to the right way i see that doing good things and changing world and the fashion industry to the better is really important for you personally but as well Luisa via roma has been involved in quite a few philanthropic efforts but do you think customers care about ethical views of a company nowadays i think that more than ever you know there is like a whole big um like crazy communication with social media with internet and everything so now like the company should really uh like transmit like really good messages because now like every generation from millennials not millennials they are really uh interested to know more what they are buying what is behind what are the ethical values of a company how the people is treated in that company how is produced how is the environmental impact so i think that this is the moment to raise the voice and to join forces with you know the right connections to to change the 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 direction of the industry in a good way i couldn't agree more with you i really think that especially young people do care about such things and they don't just buy whatever it is totally. yeah, they're, they're, they buy consciously now totally i totally agree with that but Okay, you understand that, but was it hard to explain that part to Luisa via Roma and how do you convince such a big company to to be involved in this effort? Well, I think that um it's a company that is really uh interested about their clients and of course they need to transmit what they're like really doing to change things. So, um of course giving their clients something really clear on how they could buy things that are like in a really um good perspective of the industry for example if you're buying a product and uh you're going to buy something that is um eco friendly or maybe you're going to buy, buy something that is um women's empowerment or that is uh upcycling or recycling you could like have it in a really clear way so the client knows that their money is going in you know in that direction a product that they're like um that we have a different uh view or a different destiny you know and this is also we needed to make it that information like really clear and really uh attractive also for the client so this will be transmitted and this will be published like on November on the web page and uh the clients could really you know find all these uh selection that it's like a selection that is super cool because i think that also is a cliche of the sustainable and on the charities and everything you know that when you think about sustainable the people think just about environmental it's not just about environmental it's about human rights it's about uh how the people is treated behind how it's about all the 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 the, the, the circular economy of 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 the whole you know uh process and um and it's the cliche that the people think it's just environmental and uh that sustainable might be like something that you're going or to a yoga ritual yeah. or a african safari outfit or something and it's not like that you could be like super cool and super stylish but with ethics and you are doing something that is not damaging the planet or the people So it's really about making sustainable attractive and sexy. Exactly. Let's, exactly. Right? That's the point and that is the way that it should be. Yes. And uh do you have any any advice for let's say young young brands who are trying to establish themselves? What is the best way to to establish the com- the young brand, the young company? I think that when uh young company it's a starting it's like at this point is they're in a really good position because what is happening in the fashion industry a lot of industries they have they have like years and years and years of um a process that they needed to change it from scratch to become sustainable and that is really expensive or it's like a really hard process to change a lot of things so when you're starting you could really start with the right foot 
and do like things good and you should communicate that from your friend if you communicate that i think that there are a lot of clients that are trying to find these kind of friends that are cool and they're ethical so uh they have everything to start in that path so it's basically advantage basically if you're doing it let's say old way it's not going to work now it's not going to work anymore well the old way that they are trying to change it and that's why they are like making a lot of you know efforts and the brands that are changing a lot of the process they are like investing also in these in these things so um i think that it's like a a, a long process you know it's step by step but the brands that are starting and that's why i think that it's like a a, a huge possibility for emerging brands because mm. they will take like a huge advantage to the old ones so i think that that's yeah, a good possibility for young designers yes it's very true what you're saying um how do you balance your private life and work like do you i know that you do so much you have so much on your in your shoulders and i know that besides like louise of aroma projects you also run some other some other projects but Do you have time for yourself? <laughs> I try to do a lot of volunteering and for myself um I think that everything comes from, you know, the values in, from your family. So when you have like a really good link uh with the people that is in your family, uh my husband that supports a lot, you know, all the things that I want. I think that we share a lot the values so a lot of things you 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 work like a team so sometimes when you are not working for something like a business oriented but for a passion i think that when you share that in a couple it becomes like really rich so of course um we try to make that time when we are together to make it like you know uh super valuable and to do amazing things together and to have more motivation to volunteering more and to do more things in that direction and i think it actually adds to your relationship when you you value that time so much because you i'm sure you both are busy and this time becomes even more special when you just can be together without anyone else and it's it's I precious totally i think that it's precious and also i think that you start to share a lot of like brainstorming of creative things because you meet like a lot of really interesting people and then you want to open that boundaries and why don't we try to do that kind that kind of project and to help in these and you know that so it becomes like super rich yes couldn't agree more with you um I know that you you're Mexican originally and you you grew up in Mexico, right? Yeah. And I'm not sure how Mexican mentality is, but how how does your family look at your work? Like do they support you? Do they love what you do or they say like, "Oh, come on, like be quiet, woman." You know? Well, you know what? Um yeah, Latin American uh families are super conservative. Uh but i think that things are changing my family is like really open uh my father has always been like super supportive actually he has like um uh an industry of of a fabric of 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 chemistry and he never told me you need to be and go in that direction he was like really support me of whatever i want uh but i come from a family where uh my mom uh was not working was just like caring about us and so on and from generations is the same situation yeah. so i guess that it's uh different i guess that when um you know women work a lot or they're traveling a lot they're always going to come like the people that judge something but that comes not just in the woman it comes in the men but that i my um uh, let's say conclusion about this topic and on any topic is like you need to be surrounded in your world with the people that makes you grow and that tries to give you support and that you means a support also for them because when you are surrounded by people that you don't admire it's just going to take you down you know and uh it's really great to to be surrounded with people that 
we grow up to, all together and it's like a f- chain of favors, you know. Yes. So that, that makes the difference. What is the most challenging part of, of your job? I think that um, the most challenging thing is to to have like the, 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 the support of a lot of people and the credibility because it's a topic that has a lot a uh, lack of uh, information in a lot of sections. I am always like trying to study more about it and to know more. There is like a huge thing that every time you, you need to to know more how to help and everything and to make attractive as a business you know exactly. this part so this is like the really like hard part but sometimes you know it's like business or the other part so when you think that how to link it and to make it like attractive and sexy also in that part of i think that that's a challenging part but you're doing it so well i think you have a real oh, talent of connecting you. right people to each other i think that's the big part of philanthropy because you are trying to convince brands, companies, whatever, people to put money into something and they basically don't get return. It's mm-hmm. just you're doing it for good cause, right? It's 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 your hardest calling and, and it's a hard it's a hard job. Well thank you very much for what you're telling me. I would say that also I learn in this path how to make that the companies or the people that try to uh, you know participate in these kind of projects will really receive something you know so because now as we said before the brand reputation is more important than ever so they could lose clients so when they are doing this it's also like to create a strategy and from online offline with the right people with the right media and so on it's also really attractive for the companies because that will make like totally uh, return on investment yeah, maybe I, I I said it wrong. Like it's not that they don't get anything in return. They do, but what I meant is they don't have direct financial return right away. Like yeah, you course. can't put it on in a business course. plan. You of know, course, you invest course. such amount and you'll get this. You know, so for you don't. It's not in a business language. So yeah. you basically have to really talk them into doing these things. Yeah. Yeah, that is so true. And the point is also to find, because I think that there are like a lot of companies that every time they really care. So when you find a dialogue, it's like a relationship, you know, uh, in whatever, from law, from whatever. If you have like the right and you share the right ethicals and the same values, you have a dialogue. So it's really rich. But if just like it's one from one part and not the other, you don't arrive to anything. So this is the point to find like the shared value. The shared value, the energy. Exactly. Yes. Um, Can you tell us what project you are working on now? Maybe a little bit and like, I know you cannot (laughs) give us everything or maybe you can tell us about the last thing you've done. Well, um, I could tell you Two things I could tell you about, like the project of the of the of the sustainable um, fashion on the website. That is, of course, to make you know that part sexy and give the spotlight to amazing brands in all different categories. You know, from uh, women, men, kids, beauty, and design. So it's like the whole industry could really find somewhere to find something amazing, but with ethics, which it's like a huge challenge also to change you know, from the company, everything, you know, to to try to make it like environmental friendly and so on, that it has been like a a, a journey. Uh, And um, I would say like one project that I loved was the project that was to help um, a foundation uh, uh, in in Mexico City that is fighting against women's uh, violence. So that project was relating a fashion and art and to do like a great auction in an amazing museum in Sumaya Museum. And from the 100% of uh, the auction was going to build this institution that is helping, you know, women and their families to recover themselves, the mental health, and also to to develop the, 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 the way to be independent economically. 
and that will be like in a safe and uh, protection, you know, uh, place to 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 be happy and to develop their lives. So that was like a really um, a project that that really stayed into into my heart. Another project was really related with health and children. So uh, that it was to 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 help a lot of uh, vulnerable families that they don't have the funds to, to, to maintain their, the, the problems and the illness of their children. So, um, it's like to raise money to help that, uh, institution for, um, all the things that are necessary to, to help them to fight maybe illness for their children. And that was really nice because also when you have like the, the contact with the children and you see them and you realize that there are like living in their little you know bodies they have like a huge like mind as well because they say you know yeah maybe i'm like have like three years of life but be happy i mean why do you are like uh, worried about uh the traffic jam or worried so when you start to see that realities you say oh my god you my start problems to are your, so yeah, small you say, yeah really so uh, those were like some projects that really stayed into my heart and that says, you know, let's do more and more and more. Yeah, I guess when you finish such important, huge and valuable projects, you, you get such satisfaction. It's amazing. It's really, you feel like super lucky to have the chance to participate in such things that you say, really, what I want is to open the network, but not the network of, you know, relations and this kind of, open the network to link with the people that really wants to help. And because there is like a huge community that I think that are willing, you know, to join forces in that direction. And it's people that maybe have like a lot of decision makers in economies, a lot of, so if we link you know, that network in that community, we could really do amazing things. Yeah, and it's amazing for both parties. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I want to ask you, for young people who are, who are thinking to do the same, the same what you do, but they're not sure if they're going to make any money, because basically, of course, you need to survive, right? But they really want to do good for 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 the world, for the communities. But they're thinking, oh, but I'm not gonna make any money. Like, how how, how am I gonna live? Do you have anything to say for them? How do you encourage them to participate in philanthropy? I would say that the most important thing is uh, in order to be, you know, to help sustainable things and to help others you need to be sustainable about yourself so it's really important to have something that you the more you are in a good situation the more that you can help so at the same time if you have like really if the young people have like a, an interest to help there are ways like to do volunteering and to start to you know split their time so how during and then if at the same time they have they mix that with their passion, I don't know, the, the, what they are studying or something, they will find a way to link that, mix that path and make it happen. You know, there you could do that in any other, any industries from chemistry, from fashion, from arts, you could really link every industry to help. But it's really important to develop uh, people that might do a change in the world. Because if you stay without any power or without any economical growth at the end you get help the less so it's important that uh like the young people study a lot and try to do change and try to do like great things for the world try to find you know the, the cure for for cancer to try to do those things and uh when they study when they find the path at the same time they could really link it then to the actually like. actually now in lots of schools i think even 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 for to the young kids the, the teachers they explain about the problems our world world faces and i think it's really important to start this to start it early totally we need to have these conscious i think that 
that's why I think that in the in every single you know school and universities, it's really important to have some part linked to um, to consciousness and mental health and so on because we live in a world that it's everything like too rush to have more money driven to money you know all the, the the way of instagrams and my perfect life my perfect coffee in my uh, perfect luxurious ways and so on that if you don't have that balance you have like a really internal mental health it's really difficult to arrive to that point of satisfaction and where you could find like something to change yeah, I Good think as, as you said, that especially with the young generation, Instagram became such a big part of our lives and it can be unhealthy sometimes. It's totally, I think that it's totally unhealthy because a lot of, you know, uh, kids and young generations that you see like aspirational images that if they don't arrive to that aspirational images, they would never reach happiness. and it's a surprise it will never reach them because it's fake you know yeah even it's not like i think bella hadid even posted something something saying that guys you see my pictures on instagram but it doesn't mean that my life is perfect and i'm never you know depressed or have negative feelings all, what you see is just a picture and you never know what's really happening behind the scenes totally and when you decide to post one picture you say oh this moment I, I love it because i was like really happy and i look good and you why don't you put like the you know uh the the picture when you were or crying or even like happy but you're like in your pajama or something yeah. no one put like the real life yeah know, nobody like wants to see boring real part. life exactly. yeah which is like it's really sad because that is life it should be like beautiful as well like to see all that like little you know mistakes okay guys let's all start posting real stuff now yeah exactly <laughs> yes well, Fernanda, thank you so much for all the information we learned today. It was really amazing and insightful and really touchy to hear all the projects you have worked on. And I admire, I really do admire your passion. Thank you so much. It's beautiful much. to see. Thank you for giving me the chance to speak about these things. And also, I it's really an honor as well because you're super young and you are trying to change and give your time to change this industry in a good way and you're helping a lot of people a lot of women um i think that the the message that you're giving with your foundation the people should really enter to see more what you're doing what is really the topic because maybe the people think that fashion is just like a superficial it's like a big industry that is doing a lot of money it's like making a lot of of impacts in the economy and they don't know the vulnerable situation of a lot of women that are working in this industry because there are a lot of powerful people and there's like a lot of vulnerable you know community vulnerable so you women are and men doing yeah. also like an, an amazing work doing that so it's also I'm, i really admire you as well for that. yeah that's why we're trying to actually actually educate people about the problems we have that's in amazing. the fashion community that's amazing because it's to it's a preview of the problem you know it's to try to 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 prepare the people to avoid that kind of situations which is amazing yes thank you so much again thank you thank you very much <laughs>